Welcome to another episode of Ask Better Questions. In today's podcast, we're tackling a universal challenge, becoming a better leader. So where do you start? So whether you're navigating a team at work, guiding a community project, or simply aspiring to inspire those around you, leadership is a journey fueled by the right questions. So where do you start? Well, buckle up because we're about to embark on a self-discovery expedition. So what is leadership? What is a leader responsible for? You have to start with these first principles. Well, leaders can be responsible for a lot of things. But the number one job of a leader is to create an environment for your team to thrive. That's not yourself thriving, but that's your team to thrive. Now, so that's important. So I'm going to repeat it. Okay, now write this down if you must. Your job as a leader is to create the environment for your team to thrive. And that may seem self-evident and that may seem uh, barely straightforward. But most leaders don't understand the job that they're in. They are in the job of creating a thriving team and your job as a leader is to create the environment so your team thrive it's not to pull the best out of your team that's up to the team member to produce but if you create the environment the team will produce the goods so how do you go about doing that and i think the most important part that i've learned through my many years of successful leadership is you ask your team that that seems very counterintuitive no no no. i'm the leader i should be bringing all those solutions but you ask your team what it is that you need to do to make their jobs easier and more often than not your team will be more than happy to give you suggestions and ideas they are after all the people doing the job and if you want to know how to get the job done better, easier, faster, etc., you ask your team. Um, there's countless examples of, um, of great places to work where managers wander around and ask their employees, can I help you do your job better? Is there anything you need to be able to do your job better? And those places are typically the best places to work because everyone is pulling in the same direction. Everyone knows where they're going and everyone is interested in the outcome. A lot of times, a lot of hotels function like this um, because they're in the customer service game and they understand that if your people look after your customers, your customers will look after your business. So look after your team who is looking after the customers. And this, this flows from there. So now we know what it is that you, your job, your role as a leader is. How do we deliver that? Like what's stopping you from delivering that? And typically, and this is going to sound very silly, but typically the number one excuse that you get for people not doing the leadership tasks, not achieving, not being able to do leadership is they don't have time. They don't have time to do these things and the like. Um, and I've had this conversation with countless managers. If you don't have time to manage your team, it, it shows that you're not managing yourself. You need to manage your time effectively so that you can provide the goods for your team. You can create this environment. You can give them the assistance they need as they need it. And if you're not capable of having the time, there are one of two things happening. You're, you're not confident enough in your current role or you're focusing on the wrong things. And sometimes it's a combination of both, typically. Um, and I'll give you examples. Uh, so if I was speaking to one of the managers I've dealt with previously, they have said they're getting snowed under with meetings uh, and they have not been able to meet with their team and uh, catch up with them and do the leadership things that we have stipulated in previous meetings. And that tells me that they are prioritizing meeting with other people outside of their team over meeting with their team. It also means that they have been snowed down with other work that is not the leadership work that they need to do. 
Um, and this particular person had the title of team leader. And I've gone, great, you're a team leader, but you're a team manager. Because ultimately speaking right now, you're taking requests to leave and you're processing the KPIs, you're doing quality assessment work, etc., over your current team. But you're not actually speaking to the team outside of meeting with them to punch heads and say, you, you failed here, 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 and here, do better. And that is not leadership. That is management. That's whenever you see this person, you want to run away because they only ever give you bad news and they will ruin your day. And that is not a leader's job. A leader's job is to, like I've said at the start, create the environment whereby your team thrive. And if all you're doing and every time you speak to them is kicking heads because you're speaking to a person because they've stuffed up, then you as a leader have failed. You have failed to create the environment where they don't stuff up. Now, if that's the case, maybe it's the person, maybe it is, but have you had the conversation with them prior to telling them they've stuffed up? Have you created an environment whereby they can thrive? Have you made sure they've got the right uh, training? Have you made sure that their personal situation is congruent with this position? So now we know what it is that we do, we know how it is we should approach what it is that we do, and we know we need to make sure that we are managing ourselves to be able to manage our team. All right, so what are the things that are important for leaders to do? The first most important thing is you need to know what drives you, what motivates you and your team. So are you fueled by a passion for innovation, a desire to create impact, or a love for building connections? Understanding your core values guides your leadership style and attracts like-minded individuals. From my point of view, I am motivated by making effective change. I know I need to create the spark inside of fellow leaders help them continue to be great leaders. My job is to communicate this across this podcast and through other mediums, and I'm passionate about sharing what I know about leadership and what I've learned. Am I the world's foremost expert on leadership? No. Are there many things for me to learn about leadership? Yes, there continue to be many, many things I need to learn about leadership. That said, I have a passion for sharing what I know and helping others achieve. And that is what drives me. That's what gets me up every morning. Which drives me to my second point. One of my strengths and weaknesses. No leader is perfect. So embrace your innate talents, be it communication, strategic thinking, empathy. Acknowledge your Achilles heels too and seek support to fill those gaps. Remember, vulnerability builds trust. I know that many leaders have been told, never ever share your weaknesses with your team. And I can assure you, every team I've worked with knows exactly what my weaknesses are, whether I've shared them with them or not. After a week of working with me, they know what my weaknesses are. I know what my weaknesses are too, but letting them know and sharing those lets them know that I am aware of those weaknesses. And it also opens up the conversation. Should those weaknesses become an issue, they can feel that they can share those things with me. Whereas previously, when I tried to keep it all to my chest and play a close, close guarded game, it doesn't work. Um, you need to be open and honest and have that trust with your team. So this leads me to inspiring other people. And the obvious question here is how do you inspire others? And this is where empathy takes center stage. Step into the shoes of your team members. What motivates them? What challenges them? Understand their perspectives, spark genuine connection and ignite their own leadership potential. Get your team playing together as a team. Everyone likes being part of a successful team. When things aren't going well, you still need to inspire your team to play as a team. 
and celebrate those little wins. I think the best way of explaining how to inspire others is to work through what bad leadership looks like. I have had many, many managers, because they're not leaders, they have called themselves my leader, but uh, who have met with me in private or in team meetings and have had no idea of their team members. They know the names, they have no idea what the motivations are, why they turn up to work, what their roles are. They are the first to admit, I couldn't do your role, but you're not doing your role well enough. Uh, and they have no idea how to motivate anyone to do anything. And that's principally because they lack empathy, but they also lack any interest uh, in their team. Don't be that guy. Um, and typically it is guys. Um, I, I have struck uh, female leaders that are the same, that just don't have time to know everyone. And I've also worked at incredibly wonderful workplaces to work for, where everyone up to the CEO go through everyone that reports to them. So the CEO actually sits with managers and goes through everyone that reports to them. Now I was many degrees away from the CEO, but the CEO knew my name because they'd had conversations about me. And that was, that, that was incredibly eye-opening to me in terms of somebody taking an interest in every single person in the organization. And there were several hundred people working in the building. I think about 600 people working in the building and that CEO had discussed every single one of them, which is going above and beyond, but that is leadership. That is understanding your people, knowing what motivates them, what challenges them, why they're showing up to work. And if you are showing up to work for a paycheck, you're in the wrong role because leadership is not for you. If you're showing up to work for a paycheck, then go and do something functional. Go and do something where you turn up, you provide a good or service, and you go home. That is not leadership. That is delivering a service or a good, and that's fine. Like, in terms of I'm not saying it's a bad thing to show up to work just to do, just for the paycheck. But if you're showing up to work just for the paycheck, you can't do it from a leadership point of view. You need to have skin in the game. You need to be invested in outcomes. And if you're showing up for a paycheck, you're not invested in those outcomes. So that's kind of my perspective on both poor management and poor employees who are showing up just for a paycheck. Now you can lead those poor employees and inspire them and get them on board. But uh, I guess that takes us to our next point. Um, once you've explored the inner landscape, then it's time to navigate the external world. Question four is, what challenges does my team face? Are they grappling with communication gaps, unclear goals, uh, lack of resources, listening actively, observe their struggles and tailoring your leadership approach accordingly gets you across the line here. Um, I will use examples. Uh, I have worked in teams where I have had inexperienced leadership uh, and they have gone to the executive level who have quested for expansion and continued to throw more work at this particular team. They have continued to say yes because historically that is what they have believed leaders do is say yes and figure it out. And that's what they've said to management. Oh, look, we can do it. We'll just figure it out. Eventually their team becomes stretched, become exhausted and they're not doing the job they originally signed up to do. They were doing, you know, 20 to 40 things a day. Now they're doing 80 things a morning and it's, they're, they're stretched. The quality is dropping. Their, their team morale is dropping. Their attendance is dropping. They're losing people to other groups or to external companies and they don't know what to do. Well, they've run out of resources. They've not got enough people. Their systems haven't grown. They've thrown more and more work at this team and the team hasn't been able to bounce back with it. The key here was the manager in charge needed to be able to say no like a leader. You need to be able to say no as a leader. So if you have a challenge like that because you've bitten off more than you can chew, you need to be able to suck it up and go to management and say, we need more resources or we can't do this work. 
And if that is going to cause enormous problems, then you need to take that. You need to accept that. And that is the role of a leadership, of leadership, of being able to say, you know what, I shouldn't have just said yes, but I've said yes that many times that now we have a problem. And you can nip that in the bud or you can let it ride and your team will collapse under its own weight. Communication gaps and unclear goals, we've covered that in last week's podcast. Companies that have unclear goals or misaligned goals cost an absolute fortune. You'll find that companies that don't align their strategic goals with their organizational goals right down to the coalface will underperform enormously compared to their counterparts that have aligned goals. This is typically a communication gap, not an unclear goal, but it can be an unclear goal as well. You need to approach all of your leadership challenges with the skills associated to get them done. But at the same time, and a lot of that stuff we cover off in our in our courses, for the purpose of this, what you're looking to do is identify and then communicate. Your job as a leader is to create the environment and you do that by identifying the gaps and communicating. Now, one last thing that I will point out is when you're empowering your team to thrive, you don't micromanage, you delegate tasks, you nurture the ownership, you, you celebrate successes. Leadership is about creating that environment, enabling others to soar, not about hogging spotlights. There are countless examples I have of leaders who are more interested in self-promotion than promoting their team. You create a toxic environment where it's about you. You want to avoid that at all costs. So to recap the thrux of this entire podcast, your job as a leader is to create the environment where your team can thrive. In order to do that, you need to focus on your communication with your team, setting your goals right, and not trying to hog your spotlight. There are questions you can ask and you should ask on a regular basis. The first and foremost is, what can I do to help my team thrive? You also need to know what drives you and what drives your team. What are the strengths and weaknesses of both yourself and your team? How do you inspire that team for greatness? What challenges do you, does your team face and how can you empower your team to thrive? Again, for that last one, the obvious is to ask your team what they need. You also need to be courageous enough to be able to say no to both your team and your senior team. So your senior management may ask you to do something and you need to be able to say no. If they want you in a meeting in five minutes, you need to be able to say no. And you need to pick your moments for these things. If there's an urgent meeting that needs to happen, you can't really turn around and say no. However, you need to be able to say no to anyone on any given day so that you can focus on creating the environment where your team thrive. Now, in future episodes, we will talk more about that. But for now, know that we covered all of these points in a lot more detail in our training, which is available for application through our website. So if you do fill in the application process, we will be back to you within 48 hours and we'll line up a meeting where we can actually meet with you and discuss your specific needs for a tailored program. So that about does it for today. At this point in time, uh, would love you to hit subscribe so you don't miss an episode. Feel free to leave us a comment. Uh, feel free to leave us a review if you feel the show is worth it. I'm Peter Adams, and I'll be here next week to ask better questions. Until then, keep asking better questions, keep exploring, and keep leading with purpose.